Morden Kanan fought him off and expelled him, but only after a long battle that left him raving and wildly dangerous as it was being fought and deeply depressed and occasionally confused after he defeated Larlock. Shadowdale today. One of my most beloved places in the realms is the pastoral forest girt Farmingdale that was for so long the home of no less than three chosen of Mistra, the wizard Elminster and the sisters Storm and Salune. I'll begin this look at Shadowdale with a departure, that of Lord of Shadowdale, Azalar Falconhand, a ranger and the son of Dove Falconhand of the Seven, chosen of Mistra, and Florin Falconhand of the Falconhands of Espar and Cormir, who was also a ranger and one of the leaders of the Knights of Midranor. Although Azalar didn't publicly discuss his reasons for leaving Shadowdale, the truth is that the goddess Myliki, who demanded his parents beget him in the first place, as she had a purpose in mind for him, spoke to him in his mind, bidding him begin direct service to her, and he accepted. His reign over the Dale was dominated by the immigration of many benevolent Fey from the Feyweald to the forests around Shadowdale to reach Mithranor via the Fey crossroads and his friendship and good relations with them. Azalar was elected Lord of Shadowdale following the resignation of Morngrim M. Cathra, which befell after Morngrim had been possessed by the Netherese Prince Eider Tansel and had escaped this control, but been dismayed by it and left thinking he was unfit to go on governing. He, in turn, had succeeded Douce Solwood of the Knights, who retired back to Cormir, to the city of Arabelle, to raise a family and to return to full participation in the Church of Timora. Adi Ulfor and by the way, it's Adi, A-D-E-E, -E, and not Adi, A-D-D-E-E, -E, -E, by the way, uh, despite many scribes dutifully repeating a spelling error on the payroll of the Twisted Tower, Adi Ulfor became Lady, ruling Lord, of Shadowdale on the Knights of Myrtle 1459 DR, the year of the Forge Sigil, when Lord Azalar Falconhand retired, officially renouncing the Lordship and naming her as successor. She was until then a shield maiden in the Tower of Ashaba Guard in her twenties and had become the chatelaine of the tower in all but name, just by quietly doing things and making suggestions without ever ordering anyone to do anything or formally taking charge. She was born in Harrowdale to human parents who'd fled Sembian chicanery in Deepingdale. Addie governed capably and was generally liked though Shadowdale was often imperiled by invaders, usually Zent-led or sponsored, during her lordship, but was sorely wounded in fighting in and around Shadowdale, in which she led the Dale's militia against Netherese directed mercenaries on the Knights of Marpanoth in 1487, the year of Runelord's Triumphant. She died of her wounds on the 12th of Marpanoth, naming her close friend and the sword commander of Shadowdale, the witch's marshal of the Dale's paltry fighting forces, Kara Sulwood, as her successor on her deathbed. Kara Sulwood literally rode out of battle to be with Addie at her passing and arrived just in time. After Addie was seen to be dead, she hastened back into the fray, weeping, but determined. Already popular with the folk of Shadowdale, Kara Selwood was proclaimed Lady of Shadowdale at dusk the, that same day. She was 28 when she became Lady of Shadowdale and turned 29 less than a month later. Although her rule began in war and for a time she truly ruled only the saddle of her war horse, in time Shadowdale was free of invaders and for years Kara ruled the Dale capably and well working alongside farmers and never dictating down to the common folk, but rather consulting with them. She took several lovers in later life, but never wed and had no children. Under her rule, 
Kara welcomed many more Fae to the Dale and surrounding woods, which led to a change in local woodcutting to a cooperative harvesting the forest approach and a resulting growth in berry and mushroom farming. She allowed the Harpers to use Storm Silverhand's farmhouse as a house of training, retirement, and healing, and she re-established close and friendly ties with Cormier, including providing its permanent envoy, Dathia Rowanmantle, granddaughter of Cortal Rowanmantle, who is a sharp-tongued but good-natured blonde woman with startlingly black eyebrows, with a home and stables, a new mansion, Dar Dragon House, that stands just south of the eastern tip of the old skull on the verges of the now reduced in size Silverming Farm. If you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like or subscribe. If you want to see other videos in the future, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms lore, please jaunt out to my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. By 1490 DR, Karin knew her mind was starting to fail her, and she set about training successors. In the last 10 day of 1492 DR, she resigned the lordship and handed the Twisted Tower over to a successor, the Lady Mareldrea Hawkguard, great-granddaughter of Mayhir Hawkguard, who was first sword of the Tower of Ashaba and a trusted aide to Lord Morngrim and Cathra until his death in battle defending Shadowdale against an Avatar of Bane-led army in 1359 DR, and moved to Storm's farmhouse to live out her remaining days in increasing care, happily learning to cook, refurbishing and re-roofing the farmhouse, and doing laundry and dishes as she read her way through Storm's library of mixed tomes, poetry, racy romances, human history tomes, elven family histories, and engineering chapbooks written by sages not of Gon's clergy. Lady Mereldra Hawkguard is a neutral good human female of middling height and build, unruly black-haired and grey-eyed, who always goes arms, but usually wears everyday homespun, her only signs of wealth being a good longsword in a superb scabbard and well-made bucket-top boots. She's calm and easygoing, slow to anger and gentle of voice, but her nice manner overlies steel resolve and stubbornness. She's afraid of nothing and no one, and can't be intimidated. She sees Shadowdale as an important community where Fae and Elvenkind live cordially and happily with humans and the wider realms, and views its advancement not in terms of population growth and land clearances, but in living in harmony with the land and improving irrigation, drainage, sun exposure for crops, local weather tinkering by deft spells, and maximum crop yields and storage with renewal of the soil being a priority. She seeks to keep Shadowdale positioned as a friend of Cormir, and so serenely independent of both Zentrium and Sembian influence, a leader among the Dales, but respectful of such each Dale making its own decisions rather than trying to weld them into an alliance against others. She has notably clashed with Scardale and Arkendale over policies, but has the knack of personally making peace with envoys and leaders so that they separate her political stances from any animosity towards Mareldrea herself. Increasingly, other Dales see Shadowdale as neutral ground to meet in to discuss contentious matters. Her hobbies include reading and discovering new fiction writers, playing board games that don't involve gambling, and getting to know the Dale and its environs ever more deeply. So she always knows where she is and can readily find her way through the forest by night. She wants to feel connected with the land. The simple lives of her people are what interests her, and more than any other lord or lady of Shadowdale before her, Dale folk consider her truly one of us. She's unwed and has no public partner, but is said to ride out with certain lady knights of Cormir who escort the Dell castles and other visitors from Cormir to the Dale, and to be firm friends with Lady Envoy Dathia Rowanmantle. 
They play board games together late into many nights, chatting easily over wines and sweet berry nut cakes, uh, which are akin to what our, in our real world, is called dark Christmas cake. Mareldrea's favorite sayings include, and so it goes, and so will you do the sensible thing or be governed by your ire and wants? And the grinning of the gods brings us pain. And pray, go ahead and delight me. She's a busy, merry woman who devotes her life to being the lord of the dale, not lording it over the dale. So now, in the later 1490s DR, Shadowdale is home to some 16,000 folk, all patrolled outlying areas included, and is flourishing after almost a decade of bountiful harvests, freedom from invasions, and careful irrigation and planting under Lady Hawkguard's careful leadership of a small, cordial, we're all in this together, council of farmers, gardeners, and crafters, and is home to expert farriers Ormrond Haletree and his cousin Shalestra Haletree, who work both independently and together as the shoeing demands, blacksmiths, friendly rivals Hoskar Meltraver from Battledale, who specializes in heavy structural framing and large hinges and fittings, and Belentra Harlhund from Selgond, who specializes in fine detail work and castings, a wagon works, Crownar and Helgonier, wheel and wagon makers and repairers, are the successors to wagon makers who died defending the Dale and whose premises were destroyed in the fighting, and tile makers, using clay from the banks of the Ashaba. Storm Silverhand remains absent from Shadowdale, dwelling in seclusion at an unspecified location. Some harpers have hinted that it's Spellguard as she nurses Borden Canaan of Earth back to full mental health and powers, and in doing so, has become his firm, deep friend with benefits, as well as cementing his deep friendship with Elminster and respect for the deities Mistra and Azuth of Toro. Borden Canaan was initially made stable by Elminster, but suffered a return to Weld spell hurling when Larlock, who was reduced to a bodiless, memory-damaged, wraith-like state in his defeat by the Sringi, tried to invade and conquer Morden Kanan's mind and gain control of his body. Morden Kanan fought him off and expelled him, but only after a long battle that left him raving and wildly dangerous as it was being fought, and deeply depressed and occasionally confused after he defeated Larlock. Elminster's absence from the Dale also continues, as he assists Laryl in Waterdeep by running her unofficial, unnamed secret police or network of active policing agents and undertakes missions on her behalf and at the behest of Mistra, notably in Baldur's Gate and in certain other Sword Coast locales, including Skullport, Athcatla, and Zazespur. His tower was rebuilt on its original site and foundations, complete with the subterranean back door entrance, now augmented by some storage cellars, from the spring of 1492 DR through to the high summer of the following year, by artisans and builders hired by Lord Arclass Delcastle. The kitchen wing out back was expanded, and a second wing of bedchambers, a garter robe, and a lounge added. It's now the residence of, chosen of Mistra, Lady Amaroon Delcastle when she visits the Dale, as well as temporary home to Elminster and various other chosen and servitors of Mistra, notably the seldom seen Averil Tassundrim, the silent chosen. The tower's live-in cook, Tarmra Valone, is said to be a song dragon and is known to command a trio of enchanted flying daggers that fight and pinion meat when she's butchering on her behalf. And that, gentles, is Shadowdale today. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around we're doing this. Cormancier. Cormancier. Yeah, you'll you'll sometimes hear Cormancier, uh, sages and so on. They're talking about something they don't know of. They just read. 
So in the same way that you can mispronounce names, Desbris for debris and so on that you've just read in a book, um, Cormancier, not to be confused with Cormansor, Cormansor. Cormancier is the kingdom. Cormansor is the place it occupies, the forest, the great forest and that area. Cormancier, Cormansor. Cormancier, Cormansor. Uh, okay, so Cormancier. 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 Human, you are come to the borders of Cormancier. What is your business here? 